Good morning, folks. The sun awakens. We saw an M2 solar flare last night from the incoming sunspot group on the northern hemisphere. The southern portion of the group set off magnetic fields up to the northern umbra, and we were left with a long-duration event. The flare itself caused a radio blackout over the sunlit side of Earth, but it also produced the first large CME that we've seen in a while. Long-duration events produced the most CMEs, and this eruption clearly had snapping fields releasing plasma into space. Luckily, the blast is mostly heading away from Earth. Indeed, there are no planets in the line of fire here. Big CME. Let's take a look at the sunspots. The departing group is retaining some magnetic complexity and delta potential. I'd have bet that this group would be the first to flare, if any. As it departs, the grouping behind it to the north has a gamma class with the magnetic split and almost alternating laterally across the group. However, it was indeed the incoming active region that fired. The southern portion of it destabilized magnetic fields connecting to the northern umbra there, and that's what caused the flare. Solar wind over the last day was very calm, and Earth's magnetic shield standing firm this morning. The next coronal hole turns in to face Earth today, and that massive plasma filament also standing firm center disk as it turns. Top stories today start in Guatemala, where the Fuego volcano has increased activity. Molten dust and ash have begun to bury nearby towns, evacuations are taking place, airport closures have begun, and the lava flows are making their way out from the epicenter. Links are found below this video. We also have two articles about the latest climate fraud scandal. Climate Gate number 3 is unfolding, where yet again there is proof of fudging the temperature data. The articles linked below are very telling of how the climate discourse got to its current status. Still got this typhoon in the West Pacific, strongest storm on Earth, and churning around among the small islands of the region. In the US and Canada, let's first notice a temperature delta that requires explanation. A low pressure cell moving across the land is bringing warm air up the eastern convergence as usual. But to the east of that, we see the Arctic flow from the last storm bringing a chill down through the Gulf of Mexico. It is producing another major winter storm event for the U.S. and Canada as it crosses. In Europe, we see the high pressure node clearing the U.K. area, while the flow towards Norway meets another one inland out of the south. Got another low even further to the south. On the watch zones tonight, we see purple at the Norwegian coast, inland at the convergence, and to the south at the other low. More of the same down under, where the moisture is prevalent mostly around the coastlines here, and that's also where the only warnings fall this evening. Website members don't miss the latest Deeper Look episode, and anyone in Northern Cali, Utah, Colorado, and Nevada, please shoot us a message about the final leg of the Mobile Observatory project if you want us in your city. We'll be picking back up in April. These are the current conditions, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. in the east, 3.20 a.m. in California. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.